Alright guys, the owner called me back on the Subaru Impreza. You didn't think there's going to be a part two, did you? Well, this is about to get interesting. So, he said the same thing happened again uh, two mornings after we swapped the relays around in this, in this relay block over here. So remember, let's recap. This is the ECT relay. Uh, that feeds the PCM that controls the throttle body. Now we swapped these two around uh, to check because uh, the hypothesis was that the relay was sticking in the off position and it wasn't responding fast enough to uh, satisfy the uh, the ECM criteria for that P2102 code. Remember we, we saw the relay got pulled down uh, the control side got pulled down, it was trying to turn the relay on, it saw no response on the load side, and then it shut the, you know, just disabled the system and uh, put the car into limp home mode. So now what I want to do, let's take another look at this wiring diagram. So, as far as I can tell, if we're not seeing a response from this relay at the PCM, we know the control side is sound. We have to focus on the load side, and the load side um, comes from, again, from a fuse box. It's supposed to be hot all the time to this relay, straight to the ECM. So it should be pretty straightforward. Now swapping this relay out apparently did nothing to change the situation. So for now we're going to say the relay is uh, supposedly okay. Now what I want to check is, is there power right now on this wire at, at pin 29? And that's going to be the top pin uh, if we pull the relay out. Now remember this fuse also feeds all this stuff here, the fuses, the main relay, ignition relay. So let's just check if there's power on these fuses right now. And uh, you know obviously there should be. And then I want to pull the relay out and check for power on pin 29. So let's connect up our trusty test light. And I actually like connecting it to the cigarette lighter through a power probe adapter. So when we turn the key to the accessory position, there you go. Now we have a good power and a good ground. So Tesla connected to battery ground. Let's pull that relay out and check for power on pin 29. Alright, here we go. There's the power pin. We have a test light and it looks kind of dim. So I connected my voltmeter and across the test light we have 11.7 .7 volts. And I say that is okay for this test. 11.7, 11.7, So basically this is actually like a load pro, see? You're connecting the voltmeter from here, and that's piggyback to the ground. Dang, so, looks like the problem is not, not from here to here. So now let's dig the PCM out again and check this little leg from 30 to C1. Alright guys, here's the next test. We want to check continuity of this wire right here uh, from pin 30 to C1. And the way I'm doing that is I have, uh, let's see, a wire coming from battery positive. Off. Battery positive through a 4 amp test light. Well, I got two bulbs here, but it's 4 amps total and then I'm going to touch this the other the other end to pin pin 30 right here so it's the second one down now the other side at the PCM that uh, on pin C1 we just have that back probe and that is going to go through our low amp test light. So this is um, like 250 milliamps. So when I touch this on that pin 30, this test light should light brightly. 
Now I, I could just use a jumper wire instead of these two test lights, but you know, just in case we're not going to fry anything, we only send four amps instead of forty. So watch for the test light. I'm going to touch that pin. Make sure your test light works. The test light does work. Now I'm going to touch it on that pin. I don't know, it sure looks like that wire has continuity. That's it. I'm just trying to. You know, it's consistent, there's no. There's nothing abnormal about that. So, her wiring is good from here to here, from here to here. Dang. Now I'm going to try a high amp draw on that on that load pin you know the the upper one so let's first check our test light so that's the 15 amp fuse we got four amps going through there touch the upper pin no issues so our feed is good where do we go from here Try to recreate it, hook up the Pico again, see what codes are stored in it right now. The other, the other uh, little detail the owner told me is, after the car sat for a while in the sun yesterday, he didn't start in the morning, uh, it had the check engine light already from the previous limp home incident. Now he said in the afternoon, he tried to start it, there was a long crank time, like five seconds. Then the car started, and it ran fine. It was not in limp home mode anymore. Isn't that kind of weird? Why would the car crank so long, and then be fine? But when it's in, you know, in the morning, it starts up fine, but it goes into limp home mode. So there's definitely something weird going on here. Uh, I guess we'll hook up the Pico and try to recreate the problem, but uh, at this point, I. Actually, I'm kind of lost. So, scanning for codes. Here are the code, code stored in memory. 2102 and 2103. I think we set this one when we uh, did our continuity check. But, let's reset these. Clear codes. Okay. Let's look at our codes again. All right. So with the relay out, it instantly sets a twenty one oh two code. Interesting. There it is. Um, trying to think of the next best test to do. Hmm. <laughs> How about we uh, change our test lead to battery positive here and see if uh, if we set a circuit high code now we're just going through a test light so now we have 12 volts on the test light going to that control pin let's check for codes again there you go, 2103 circuit high. So, so that's you know the computer is responding appropriately. I want to hook up the scope. All right, guys, I can recreate that long crank time. Here's how. So first, turn the key on. We clear our codes. Yes. 
Alright, cool. Turn the key off. Wait for the computer to shut down. Alright, now we crank. Relay off, relay on, starts up. Awesome. Reproducible. So, here's how it happens, see? Here we start cranking, relay off. Boom, relay on. Okay, this is this is very curious. The owner said it did this in the afternoon after sitting for a while. Check engine light was still on, but it started up. So basically, that's what it does after a code clear. Hmm. So every time you clear the codes, or it clears them itself, and wants to give this uh, ETC relay another chance, you get this long crank time. It's kind of weird, but it's reproducible, so it's just another piece of the puzzle. Alright guys, next thing I want to do is take the ETC relay out again, and then turn the car off and see how it reacts. You know, if it does go into limp hell mode, if it sets the code right away, and then we'll put the relay in and see what happens if, uh, if the car will automatically go, you know, back into its normal mode, or if you need to reset it, or if we can recreate this long crank time without actually hitting clear codes. Uh, I'm just experimenting at this point. So ETC relay is out. Um, let's see. There we go. Starts normally. Instant check engine light. No throttle response won't rev over 2500. Let's see back. Codes. Yep, 2102 instantly came pending and current. I'm going to shut it off. And now we're going to put that relay back in after everything times out. So I put the relay back in. We did not reset the codes. Let's see what happens. No issues. Very, very curious. So, once that relay becomes functional, you don't need to reset the codes to get back into normal driving mode. Uh, that's not what the customer really told me. He said once it's, it's in limp home mode, he, you know, he tries to shut the car off, turn it back on, and it just, it doesn't, um, it doesn't go back into normal mode. So, Let's see here. So pending codes, no codes present, and then this code, obviously check engine light will stay on. <laughs> so in this case, once again, I need to reproduce the actual problem, and we're going to have to wait another day. Uh, I might just take this car, since uh, it's his second car, he doesn't really drive it that much, and uh, just have it at my shop for a few days and every morning I'll hook up the scope, start it up, see what it does, and uh, hopefully we can tra trace this problem down because it's so specific when it occurs 
and you know we're gathering data along the way but still it's it's very it's unclear everything seems to be working as it should at the moment 